In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Hey, Elmo, uh, are you playing some Super Mario 64? I absolutely love Super Mario 64. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. I absolutely love that game to death. It is so good. But where's the Nintendo 64? And you're playing the game with an Xbox 360 controller. Yeah, I know. I got a rhyme of Pirate Bay and I'm playing a copy on my PC. <laughs> Elmo, you can't do that type of thing. You can't just illegally download games online. Especially, uh... Nintendo knows everything. <laughs> I doubt it, Drew, because I'm a gangster. Oh, who could that be at this time? <laughs> God damn it, Elmo! This is why you don't illegally pirate Nintendo games. <laughs> What's up everybody, welcome to the House of Mario, episode 58, and we are the Nintendo Podcast, a part of the 8-Bit Collective. I'm your host, Drew Agnew, and joining me, as always, is the host I like to boast about the most, Bryce DeWitt. Alright, okay, I'll take that one this week. You'll take it? I'll take it. <laughs> uh, this week we're talking a bit more on the uh, Philip Mewson situation, uh, Emu Paradise uh, taking all its ROMs down because of Nintendo's threats, and some news coming out of Gamescom. But first, Bryce, I want to hear. Uh, I want to hear about your computer. <laughs> My computer. Yeah, you've uh, just got a brand new gaming PC, and you've just been uh, complaining about putting it together for the last forty minutes. <laughs> oh, I had a nightmare with it. <clears throat> Sorry. Yep. Um. So everything arrived. I was waiting for this computer because it means I can stream PC again and on Twitch and just all this nice stuff. Um. It all came together, and the case that came with it was just too small. Well, it didn't, didn't fit your stuff. Didn't fit my stuff. Uh, I did get it to fit eventually, uh, and it's a nice machine. Uh, it's it's just an absolute shame that I got so frustrated while trying to build the thing and having to fret for the fact that I might break it in the process. Just parts not going together very well in terms of size-wise, and the case not working as an overall housing for the thing, but... It, I mean, it's all together now, so, you know, it's it's ready ready to do whatever I need it to do. Mm. So, that's all that matters. Yeah. So, have you, like, you've played a bit of Monster Hunter and things on it, <coughs> sort of test it out? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think everything's running at max at the moment. Uh, can't think of anything that I have on my PC at the moment that doesn't run at max, mm. which is good. Uh, max at about, anywhere, well, depending on the game, anywhere between 80 to 120 frames a second. Mm. Um, Similar to what I get on my Switch. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so nice. It's so nice, but uh, I I really want to uh, stream with it and all that nice stuff. So hopefully people will check that out when I put put up a stream. Yeah, it'd be great for streaming. Like, um, Ooh, on, yeah, on my uh, on my laptop, like like it's, it, it can run games fairly decently. Obviously, nowhere near as what your computer will now, though. But like when when I'm streaming something and uh, I put OBS next to it. It's just like, oh, it slows down when you press that record button. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Bryce, let's jump into it, the uh, Philip Muses thing. We talked about it plenty last week. I don't I don't want to put anywhere near the amount of time, maybe five minutes or so. <clears throat> yep, yep. But uh, the situation escalated so much since we last talked about it. Yeah, yeah, it has. Which, which is uh, unfortunate. So, IGN now has removed all of Philip's articles and videos from IGN. Uh <laughs> <laughs> because it's turned out that everything he's pretty much ever written, all his videos, whatever it might have been, have been plagiarized from elsewhere. His uh, Metroid Samus Returns video review was uh, ripped from... Uh, oh, I've lost it now. Was it Engadget? No. Anyway. It's something along the lines. Some, like, a, a gaming website. <laughs> it's a, Yeah, look, it's just it's unfortunate looking at it and just being like, well, hey... <laughs> Guess where he got influence of yeah. this one from, and like, if you, 
Like, he tries to be clever, but he's not... You read the examples. Mm. Like, there was a whole list of them. You read the examples of, like, where he's plagiarised. He's not very good at hiding it. No, and I'm so surprised that if if he's done it that much, if it wasn't just de- the Dead Cells review, if it was Metroid Samus Returns, and he plagiarised it from a big website, I don't know how that didn't get tracked back then. I really, I really don't. Mm. But um, so, but what really, really grinded my gears about it um, since since then, I've it's it's actually made me pretty angry that this has come out. So that uh, Lily, uh, Lily, ex- oh shit. I have to pronounce her name. Uh, Lily Xavier. Um, I've, I've have gotten that wrong, but I won't butcher it anymore. Lily Xavier. I think so. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's she. She released a screenshot from a phone of, uh, for a chat she had with Philip back when they were working together at IGN. Um, Philip starts off saying, "Hey, I've got a question for you. What do you think most people are excited about Super Smash Bros. for Switch?" Yeah. And like, with hindsight, looking back at this, you're like. <laughs> okay. So, so Lily says, uh, most people are excited for Super Smash Bros. for the Switch because unlike pr- most previous iterations, we are able to take this game on the go. Not to mention that with Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, we were given new characters such as Cloud, Bayonetta, etc. We can only expect that Nintendo will up the ante and deliver us some new characters that we all know and love. Most people are excited because now that we know that there's a new Smash game, what characters we could possibly play as? How's that, she says. And Philip res- responds, you're, you're you're amazing. Thank you so much. That really helps me out a lot. I've been thinking about it all wrong. You have the right perspective. <laughs> you're not... He's, he's not writing a, a thesis on, like, global warming. <laughs> he's writing about... So, Philip, why do you think... Why do you people- think people are so excited about this, you know ultra stellar game that's coming out for the Switch that has like a massive fan base and like over a decade's worth of work under its belt why do you think people will be excited yeah, for that I, I, I know not I know Smash Brothers isn't every Nintendo fans like game I know a lot of like a lot of you guys probably listening might not be excited for Smash Bros I know some of you aren't even going to buy it but as a gamer let alone a Nintendo fan let alone a Nintendo editor at the biggest you know, gaming website in the world. How do you not come up with that opinion yourself? Because he's not interested in coming up with it himself. You know, this is this is my theory. My theory is that he started off the job humbly, right? He didn't he didn't try to plagiarize anything. He obviously got swamped underwater. He was just like, this is really hard. This is a lot harder. No, but he's than been I doing it, be. it for years. I know he's I know he's been doing it for years. This is this is. This is now. It's more than just being swamped. It's not just oh shit, I can't. He he can't formulate any of his own opinions. No, and, and he never has. No, right? Okay, but hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. Right? He when you get a job like that, it's not something you just throw on the fucking dumpster and just be like, I'll just copy every article I'll ever do. He probably tried to start it off pretty humbly and do it on his own and do his own thing, because plagiarism is a serious issue in terms of editorial works. Uh. So he probably tried to do it on his own, and then as soon as he, as soon as he just got to the point where he's just like, you know what, I actually don't think I have the time. As soon as he got to that point, he just started up again, and he just flew all the way up until now. Man, his his whole career was built on just bullshit. Yeah, which yeah. was just looking like I know hindsight's easy, but looking back on it, just the amount of probably time I spent, you know. I didn't, I didn't read a lot of his articles, but I might have uh, seen the odd video review for the game I was interested in, whether it was Wolfenstein on Switch. or He's, he's done a fair few Switch reviews for games that have been ported out later. Yeah. But, um, yeah, listening to him on MVC and whatever, it's just like, thinking back, it's like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, and IGN knows that too, and they're, they're apologetic. They're, like, they're, they're hurt more than anyone in this situation and I feel sorry for no well because it hurts it, it hurts their reputation like, yeah. without a question it's it's not it's not good for anything for them yeah. um, it's unfortunate that it's come to this point where you know we've he, he's he, he literally challenged the internet to find anything that wasn't originally his and they found it in droves they found it in droves yeah how stupid do you have to be pretty stupid and god 
And it hurt that, like, not even just the Dead Cells thing, but the rest of it hurts IGN's reputation because they didn't do the research mm. when they when they hired him. They're just like, oh, look, it's his videos. Yeah, whoever the hiring team is, I, I, I feel sorry for them. They're like, oh, shit, we should have looked a lot more into it. Yep. It's just... It's and just, their hiring process is going to be very strict now. It certainly is. But just, I'm sure the people who do the hiring in there are like, you know, you've been, you've obviously got a big YouTube channel. You just, you just take take it how it is, and you just think you can't be stupid enough to just copy people's work. Apparently, you can. Apparently, you can be stupid. Yeah, enough. Apparently, you can, and that's a shame because <laughs> a lot of game journalists and that come down on on the stance that oh, you shouldn't have hired a YouTuber. You know, you know, he he's he didn't go to you know uni or <clears throat> college to become a journalist. He's just a YouTuber, and he's the the uh, the YouTubers under the same umbrella, but they're all just you know useless. Which is unfair. Which is really unfair because a lot of YouTubers do. They just as good a work <laughs> yeah they do just as good a work if not better in some cases than a lot of games media yeah. because it's their business it's their creation they're not just working for you know an outlet just getting their paycheck yeah yeah exactly they're, yeah. they're pushing everything themselves it's a formulated opinion yeah. that uh, yeah that they've had to come up with you know um, you look at you look at people like like on the YouTube scape like the competitionists or Jared Carnarvon Bauer, Peanut Butter Gamer. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, you know, Gerard, Gerard obviously plays his games from literal start to literal 100% completion. He has his own opinions on the games that he plays through that. Then you've got Jared. He's very critical of like RPGs and stuff like that. And Peanut Butter Gamer is very Nintendo y. Yeah. You know, and they put their own humor and everything into it. And it's, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Yeah. And they've got to drive that content themselves. They've got to get know. the yeah. They've got to get the sponsors themselves. They've got to well you, do you, the editing for the most part. They probably when they get a bit bigger, they hire people for that. But there's a couple of gaming co- collaboration groups on YouTube, and if you if you've been in the YouTube scape long enough, you know about normal blue normal boots and hidden block. Yeah, yeah. Um, like those are thi- those are things that those guys have built from the ground up, and they've done themselves. And you know, whenever they have a paid sponsorship or whatever, um, well. Paid, paid sponsorship I should just say a promotion like uh, hey review this game or whatever and they send them free shit or here's, here's a free switch or you know whatever um, they are you know entitled to say nice things about them being given the things it doesn't necessarily mean they have to say good things about it yeah you know and that, um, they have been that, like with YouTube too it does get a bit hazy where it gets dicey because not everyone has that same ethics level no no which is yeah but anyway yeah that I thought I thought that was just mind blowing to be honest just someone who's at that higher position can't even come up with hey why are people excited for Super Smash Brothers because <laughs> I can tell like you, you could just make it up you could be like oh you know there's a lot like think about it like oh shit I know nothing about Super Smash Brothers um, but I'm meant to know everything but uh, okay there's a lot of characters oh they're excited about the characters um, it's on the Switch uh, so it's going to be a good looking game which is portable it's going to be portable like you can it's, it's it does it doesn't take much you got you, you got to be a real idiot <laughs> i mean if you if you're if you're a journalist and you're writing about games i feel like you need to know about the community as well and mm. there's a smash the smash community is literally nintendo's biggest community yeah well especially competitive yeah it is literally nintendo's biggest community so just from that perspective like you, obviously you get a lot of people that are just like they buy the shit out of Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild and stuff like that and people get talking but it's not exactly a community no you know um, Smash Smash is a collective it has a pro scene it has a casual scene there's major city meetups and all that stuff it's a multiplayer game that's what they do mm. um, because it's a fighting game it doesn't work as well online as say shooters would yeah which means that people make more of an effort to go out and meet up and all that stuff yeah. and stuff like Mario Kart too like that's a lot easier online yeah exactly yeah yeah. because because lag doesn't make that much of a difference you can sort of just fake what the other cards are doing just make sure you're doing the right thing yeah 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 exactly so just looking at it from that perspective and being like well you should know something about these communities as well like they're pretty yeah. they're pretty big and they they have very clear 
they have very clear voices. Like the Smash community has very clear vo- has a very clear yeah. voice. And like just with us, we're only doing a, a podcast from my spare bedroom. But like we still like we wouldn't you know just make shit up or talk about something we don't know about. Like we want to know about the Smash communities. We want to know about the Splatoon communities. We want to know about the developer side of things. Yeah, yeah. And we try to do that throughout the show by doing you know, interviews with numerous people, whether it's you know, the voice actors or the uh, developers. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I don't know what whatever this has come around to. I guess it's just it's just it's in the end it's just disappointing that this this guy managed to find a way to insult himself more and also take a company's name name down a branch with it. Yeah, and it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if there was a court case over it soon. So yeah, and of course what we talked about last week with Paul, just all the people who wanted that job and have worked for that job for years and years, and he's the one who got it. And it looked like he worked for it, but... <clears throat> he didn't work for it, no. Charismatic and good at video editing. And, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say that means he worked for it. Yeah. I'd say like he worked for his own profiteering, obviously. Mm. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what he does next, but I don't care anymore. Really don't care. No, yeah. <laughs> All right, Bryce, let's move on. Uh, th- this, this was a, a news article not like about a week or two ago, but... I, I, I want to focus on the actual topic rather than that but basically Nintendo have taken down I Love ROMs uh, gone to sue them um, so they're no longer a website they're a huge ROM website and now because of that Emu Paradise has now uh, said okay um, before Nintendo comes to sue us <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we've taken down ROMs we're not we're going to be a part of it um, yep bye bye peace out <laughs> uh, but I want to have this discussion because as Nintendo fans, as uh, you know, you've bought a brand new gaming PC, <laughs> and uh, you know every every now and again, you know, you want to test some ROMs on it. <laughs> right, All right. Uh, like, be be honest, we're we're no stranger to ROMs over the years. No, I don't think anybody's a stranger to ROMs. No, you know, um, it was it was commonplace as as kids to have GBA ROMs and stuff. Yeah, like exactly. That. I remember playing uh, the Japanese version of Pokemon Emerald at a friend's place before it actually come yeah come out in the Australia, and it ran like shit. Yeah, it would, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Lagged. I think the music just went just <laughs> like you <laughs> couldn't hear it. It's all in Japanese, but we were so excited, just like oh, just seeing it's this Pokemon g- Emerald. Yeah, yeah, seeing this game, you know, probably three or six months before it, out, it was out in Australia. Yeah. And uh, being able to go back and play all of these old games and like stuff that isn't just a link to a past or Mario World, which is easy to, uh, or especially now with the virtual console, it's easy to go and download that stuff. But stuff that wasn't so easy, like Ducktales and stuff like that, before you know, before it was rebranded, and you can get it in the uh, Disney Afternoon Collection now. But ha- ha- what's your stance on um or stance <laughs> on stance. yeah? What's your stance? I'll ask, yeah, I'll still answer that question. What's your stance, Bryce? What's your what's your opinion <laughs> <laughs> on uh, on ROMs? Look, uh, piracy is illegal, no matter what you, what you deal with it, I guess. Um, but uh, you know, as kids, I think what what having ROMs did for me uh, as as a child who didn't know any better, mind you, mm. just keep that in mind. Um. W- I th- actually think ROMs did a lot more for me in terms of, uh, m- like, notifying me about series and stuff like that than I hadn't before. Yeah. Because, look, when you're a kid and you're young, you don't go out and buy a $70 game out of a whim. It's something you have to be excited for because you're not a kid with that money. Yeah. You know, we're grown adults now. We can go out and buy out of it, buy our video games now and we can play them, etc. and stuff like that. We're big boys. We we are big boys, the biggest boys. We we lovely we lovely men. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, uh, as as a kid, I think the main thing was that it ROMs opened my eyes to a lot of games that um, I'd never seen before. And as a response, I'd like I'd gone and bought, bought their sequels and stuff like that, or you know, I'd gone gone and looked for the game themselves so I could just play it on my Nintendo sixty four or. Hmm. You know, it. I wouldn't say that ROMs the worst thing in the world, and they're like Satan's popcorn, and they just keep them in a bag and yummy, yummy, yummy piracy. 
Um, yes, it does take money away from the devs, and that's a darn shame, but put in the hands of the right person, it's effectively a demo. Hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, like, what I want to say, I want to separate that from this from maybe, you know, obviously getting a Switch emulator or a 3DS emulator. That That's different to what I'm saying, not current stuff, but... Uh, I think it's I think it's okay for older games, especially if Nintendo or said company aren't selling them anymore. Uh, the the biggest example I go back to is that, especially with Nintendo not offering these games, is the GameCube games. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been waiting for the GameCube games to come up on, or even back to the Wii. Like okay, it makes sense. The Wii doesn't have that big a download capacity. It's got a tiny hard hard drive. Uh, Wii U comes around. We wait the five or four years that didn't happen switch we literally have nothing except for the snes game or the nes games coming later uh next month so we've got no option for gamecube games you can't go and buy mario sunshine anywhere you get a second hand copy that's it that money doesn't go to nintendo or the devs that goes to some snotty nosed kid yeah (laughs) who's got it in his basement or whatever yeah yeah. so i was looking into all different options of how to play these games because i missed a lot of the gamecube games so i went on to I uh, looked at a couple of YouTube videos and there was a... Um, I see uh, Luke in the Discord community actually has this as well, but it's a HDMI converter for a GameCube. Right, yeah. So you can plug that in the back and plug in your HDMI cord and it looks looks gorgeous, looks pretty. Um, looked into that. That's like $200. Oh. Like, that. that's a lot of... That's a, you know, a good, sizable amount of cash. It's not cheap. No, so I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. But then playing on the GameCube without that looks really... I can't go back to <laughs> non HD, right? Especially yeah. like Mario Sunshine. You know how blurry that is when you go back to it. Um, so that wasn't an option. So then I looked at my computer. I've literally got four GameCube controllers. I've got the uh, the uh, USB um, GameCube adapter for the Wii U, mm-hmm. and you can use that on the PC with the right uh, stuff installed. Yeah. So do that. Uh, get Dolphin emulator. Put put it up on the thing where it feels like a GameCube you're using the GameCube controller um, and you're playing it in you can put it all the way up to 4K <laughs> Mario Sunshine I, I can't quite do the 4K but um, yeah, yeah. so you, so it's a easier way you're not buying all these adapters you're not hooking up a new like a old consoles or anything um, so I think it's really good for that personally well yeah for sure um, I, I think again Circling back around to it, I think um, in the end, it was it was a way for us to discover it as children, and it's unfortunate that like looking forward into the future, maybe kids won't be doing that anymore, and maybe we'll see game suffrage or like sales suffrage or something like that. Um, but you know, <laughs> I guess I guess time will tell at this point. Um, yeah. Like whether whether this movie because look. They have to do it. They have to do it. They legally have to hunt these people down and, like, put a court order on them because mm. it infringes their copyright if they don't. Yeah. Like so, a, yeah. Like a like another really good memory I have from a Nintendo 64 emulator is having it on our laptops at school because, like, obviously you can't have you, you can't have the uh, Nintendo 64 hooked up at school and you couldn't have the Wii U or the Wii set up at school. So, like, in our free lessons, we used, I used to hook up uh, our laptops and bring in uh, Xbox 360 controllers. Yeah. And sort of just put them under the table like, so the teachers can't see it and you're just sort of playing Mario Kart and, <laughs> while they think you're doing work. So, um, like, emulator or no emulator, you couldn't do that otherwise. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like if, if Nintendo, instead of going after these guys, like, they'll, they'll go after them regardless, but they need to compete with piracy a lot better like yeah. if, if they don't want people downloading their gamecube games at least offer them to be to be purchased for sure because yeah. I'll, I'll go and buy a copy of mario sunshine i'll get a po- copy of you know pokemon coliseum you know, these games i want to go back and play but i literally like I, i've gone and bought them secondhand yeah you have yeah I, I, like yeah. I, I went back and bought them but with um just in their sd format i'm like oh, i don't really want to go and play these again i don't want to see him so blurry I want to see him a bit better and I've got the option to do that I've got the hardware to do that mm-hmm. it's not Nintendo hardware <laughs> but <laughs> but that's so so bit I don't feel like I'm a criminal for doing that no no yeah um uh well 
again, it, it's it's touchy because of course you're a criminal, right? You're not paying for something that yeah. that is I know, I know legally it's illegal, but just where where it comes down to every every person's sort of moral stance on it's mm-hmm. different. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Mm. Is that all? Yeah, I think so. It's look, it's it's hard to it's hard to talk about it in the sense that because I I can't I can't say I've never played rum before. Like <laughs> I've never played one. I've never played rum before. I've never smoked weed. I've, of course, <laughs> of course, I've played rum. You know, and and some games I'd even played all the way all the way through, and um, you know, never bought. Which as a kid, as a kid, again, the key point in this situation. Um, I was naive, okay? I'm a kid. You know, you're naive, you don't have a lot of money, and it's just something that you did because you could. Yeah. As a kid. And, like, I, I I understand now as a fully functioning adult how, like, important it is for these games to sell. So, you know, mm. usually I take a good look into something, and even if I'm, like, if I end up with playing it on an emulator and be like, hey, this is good, then I'll probably end up buying it. Yeah, especially like it, like it, it's a it's a lot different going back and saying, okay, I'm going to try Pokemon Coliseum, who's made by a different team than Game Freak, and yeah. getting that license to be on the hypothetical <laughs> Switch Virtual Console, which won't happen anytime soon. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. Oh man, buddy, <laughs> Virtual Console, just hurry up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if that's if it ever comes, I want VC again. Yeah. Well, GameCube games. They, who knows? Does, then, does Nintendo even know they've got a GameCube? <laughs> they try to forget about it. I think they're like, ah, nah, nah. We didn't have a console out. That's why the PS2 sold so well that generation. Oh, whoops, we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> they won't ever forget that console. I don't think actually. I think it was. Well, like... they're still releasing controllers for it, so you wouldn't think so. Nah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, so, Bryce, let's talk a bit, a little bit about the. Uh, uh, what's it called? They're called the Indie Highlights. So usually they're called Nindy Directs, but this is a... Looks like a Nintendo Europe sort of handled this one. It's all European uh, voice voiceover, so a bit of a different flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, they, they announced a heap of uh, indie games coming to Nintendo Switch uh, between now and probably early next year. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, really good-looking ones, including three that dropped today. Which which will uh, Murphy's Law, um, Bad North, and I'm just loading them as we go, and uh, Prison Ar- Architect. Yep. Uh, Murphy's Law. This this was one a while ago, which I was really intrigued by. Murphy's Law. Yeah. Murphy's Law. What did I say? Murphy's. Murphy's. Which yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah. the edge. Yeah. <laughs> Murphy's Law. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one that intrigued me. I've now gotten a chance to play it yet. Neither of us have, but seeing it back in the direct. Probably start of the year, I think. Might mm-hmm. have been a bit further than that. It looks a really interesting concept of shooting each other and being able to like grow your character pretty much. It's like a sort of reverse Splatoon in some ways. Yeah. I mean, actually, this might have been even mid mid last year this got shown because I remember Splatoon was like hot in our minds while we were watching this. So maybe that was. Uh... It was announced a very long time ago, that game. Yeah. Um, And it looks like there's been significant improvements on it, but. God, you're riveting, aren't you? Jeez, I am riveting today. I'm not sure what's happening to me. <laughs> um, it uh, is it is it really worth the thirty dollars? Well, it's thirty dollars, and like obviously we haven't had a chance to play it yet. But um, it just as like a online only game, like solely on Switch, like Fortnite gets away with it because it's sharing the audience with Xbox One and PC, and obviously it's literally the biggest game in the world. Yeah, yeah. so. And uh, like Rocket League crossplay as well. It'd be interesting to see how Murphy's Law if it can sort of stick or get a passionate player base for people to play with all the time. Yeah, I'm not sure it will. Um, it's not out. It's not out on PC yet, but hopefully uh, that's crossplay. Because it, yeah, because it like e- like this game just on Switch should be, and that that sort of worries me with uh, purchasing it as well. Like thirty dollars, you know, that's a decent amount of money for a game that you can pay. You can get Dead Cells. You can get Hollow Knight. Mm-hmm. You can get like a lot of other games for that price, um, so that makes me a little bit wary on purchasing that. Just for the, okay, is the player base going to be there? Is this going to be in six months? Uh, am I still going to be able to log on and play a game? Yeah, but it's it's got like split screen and it's got uh, 
wireless uh, ad hoc mode and stuff too. So yeah, so you'll be able to do that. Um, Bad North. Uh, this game, I don't, I don't have a lot to say about this. It looks like a like you, you've got to defend your island type of thing, mm-hmm. sort of wave attack. Yeah. Like I really like the art style. That interests me. Yeah. But, but there's not like the 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 other thing is is like there wasn't a hell of a lot of, of uh, like solid video form factor gameplay that we got to see here. So it's basically just taking it on its swim. Mm. Um, I mean, from from what I've seen, it looked it looks good. Yeah, it looked but, good. It was just really small because I hadn't actually got into anything by the end of the trailer if I remember correctly mm. yeah so and uh, the prison architect uh, yeah not my type of game either really but well it looks good it looks good for um, a prison ar- a prison architect is um, pretty good because it's been out for a while now yeah yeah um, I think it's one of those games that are just fleshed out and if you like yourself some sort of sim type management then it's not too bad right <laughs> it's not too bad right yeah um, so we won't go through all the games because there were a lot of games shown but uh, Children of Mortar which comes out early 2019 this game looks really cool yeah it's basically Diablo yeah um, Diablo sort of hybrid when I saw when I saw the children of I was just like oh my god is it children of mana sequel children of mana yeah it sounds so similar doesn't it uh huh but it wasn't I was like oh <laughs> damn yeah um but yeah it looks really cool like uh the, that like that sort of shiny pixel art really captures my attention like whatever game it is if it's got that really like pretty pixel art it's gonna capture my attention yeah yeah for sure so uh yeah, I'm interested in uh, giving that one a go when it comes out, whether it's a demo or a purchase. Mm-hmm. I'll wait for reviews probably to figure that out. But and another one, uh, Everspace. Um, I hadn't seen, I hadn't heard of this game before, but it's on, it's on consoles, it's on PC. Um, but it looks really cool. It's like a roguelike uh, game where you're going around space by upgrading your ship and doing space battles. It looks really cool. It does look really cool actually, and it was one of the games I was most impressed with over the course of the entire thing. Yeah, like the, the I don't know if that's running on Switch, the uh, gameplay we've shown, you would think it would be. But I would say so, yeah. Yeah, but like it looks really nice just the way the ship shines and you've got the sun and the planets there. Yeah. It's yeah. really good. Um, So, I wouldn't actually mind checking that on, it's on PS4, I wouldn't mind actually jumping on and see what that's like. Um, So, I can talk about it a bit sooner. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. Uh, Moonlighter, this was a game that was announced a while back, but hadn't heard of uh, any release date. It's also com- looks really fun. Yeah, it looks really cool. So you're you're a shopkeeper. Yeah. In yeah. in an RPG, and you go out get get your loot, get your stuff, and bring it back, and you basically the RPG players uh, pl- um, come to your store and buy the items they need to get through the dungeon. Yeah, yeah. Really neat. I, I, Gives you a perspective yeah. on what happens behind shopkeeper counters. Yeah, it's really cool. Like I, I heard about this game a while ago when it came to uh, Steam and or oh, just Steam actually. I think it came out May on a uh, PS4 and Xbox One. I, I assume Xbox One. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. Um, what else did I really like the look of? I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, Windjammers. <laughs> Windjammers. So this was a uh, um, this game. This game came out on uh, PS4. The, 2016 and it came out to a, like a real big amount of fanfare because people have been really excited for this to come back to modern consoles since the Neo Geo days uh-huh. um, yeah. I've, I've never played it and when I look at it I'm like oh it looks okay but like everyone has Frisbee smash yeah everyone has nothing but good things to say about it so um, yeah hopefully the sequel holds up and it's as good <laughs> yeah and a, se- a sequel got announced so that's a that's, that's huge for a uh, Windjammers fans, <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. Like if if it's as good as people say, um, for its co-op and all that, I'm all about it, especially on Switch, obviously. No, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He says. I said right. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll listen back. I'll see if it's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that that was all for the uh, the games in that little uh, video presentation. I was excited for. Um, I'm sure there's more. Like. Uh, like, so, like stuff like Terraria comes up. I'm like, oh yeah, cool. Terraria's on the well. One. I, I mean, there was a couple of there that like I th- I think most of it was pretty. I think most of it was pretty solid. But we also, you know, um, we had Slay the Spire that was very popular on PC for a bit. Yeah, a lot of them are um, um, coming Terra- from PC. Terraria popular. We've got new Monster Boy. Oh, of stuff. course, and Monster Boy and the Curse of the Kingdom. That looks, looks fantastic. Looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I played through the played through the Dragon's Trap. I thought that was a brilliant little game. Yeah. 
Um, and you've got the uh, Miguel who we had on the show earlier, who's doing the writing for that game as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. At least, at least what I can think of, anyway. Uh, unless so, you want to, unless you want to mention Streets of Rogue at any point, but I'm not. Um, it looks okay. Like it looks fun. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Uh, un- unannounced on the actual direct, which is something that surprised me, and this is something I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Yep. Was a hat in time. Yeah, unexpected. Yeah, and that came out after the direct. Now, I just, uh, I just kind of want, like, in the most, in the most sincere and non-threatening way possible. I just want to say, the, I hope the developer chokes on his laughter. <laughs> because when okay. somebody initially asked him about it, he's just like, "Ha!" Huh. Like, like we ever be bringing it to Switch, and he just laughed at them. Mm. I'd like like this game came out very close to Mario Odyssey last year, didn't it? On, um, I think it did. I think so. Like, came w- out around w- the same time as Ukulele. Why was he? Why was he so like brash against it not coming? because uh, he's not a Nintendo person, I guess. He just, I don't know. And especially with the with how the Wii U was, it's probably just too much work. Mm. But the game is literally a f- perfect fit for the Switch as a platform. Because like, I'm just, a, I, I am just a bit confused about about that just because like you're doing a you're doing a 3d platformer and you're like are you bringing it to a nintendo system where you've got p- plenty of people that would be really keen to play that type of game and you just go ha. it's like well oh, okay that's a, it's just a bit odd really yeah it is really yeah like you know playstation's a great place for that pc is obviously you know a good place for a, a for that type of game mm-hmm. and xbox but like N- nintendo when you you know you don't have that mario game at the moment you've played odyssey you've had enough and you're looking for something a bit similar, you know, a hat in time fits that bill so well. So I don't understand why you wouldn't initially have wanted it there. Uh, I don't know. Again, I, I think it's probably just down to his own personal bias. Uh, I mean, I wanted that game on Switch, so I was I was willing to wait for it. But then he said, nah. Well, then he laughed at the fact, rather. <laughs> and I was just kind of like, well, where do I pick it up then? But I'm glad I've waited a little bit longer because... yeah. You know, Switch is the place I'd want to play it, and it's like, I get it. I'm sorry. I know it's not your preferred system, but it's it's made for that system. But what about you? You just build a brand new gaming PC. What about the amount of frames you could get? Oh, on, fucking on hat on t- hat and time. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> think about it, you could play a hat and time in a hundred and twenty eight frames, and you could be like, holy macaroni and cheese, <laughs> holy holy hats. This justifies life <laughs> as it is. I just yeah. um thinking of it from that perspective just now nah. I'd, I'd, I'd just just there uh, I, I want to play it on Switch because that's where it feels native yeah and it's the same thing with ukulele like I never bought ukulele until it hit Humble Bundle and I got it for free pretty much mm. so ukulele was a great fit for Switch but you know, it, it came out that much later and it's like oh can we please have $60 I was like oh maybe not <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not sixty. Hey guys, no, not when it's coming out on humble bundle. I can pick it up for six. Mm. You know, it's too much. Yeah. Oh god. Um. So Saints Row. So Saints Row the third is coming to Switch, which is a bit of a surprise. It literally dropped probably a few minutes before we started <laughs> doing the podcast. Yeah, no joke. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's really random news. Um, Deep Silver announced it just uh, at Gamescom. No release date or mention whether it's going to include the DLC included. But um, yeah. I mean, would you, would you be interested in picking up Saints Row the Third again? I mean, my my partner was a big Saints fan, and she's finished them all. Um, maybe I would buy it again. I remember the game being fun. If anything, uh, I'm not sure I'd buy it full price. Uh, it's they're just basically in. I know, and it's the same sort of comparison that everybody gives them. But they're just goofy Grand Theft Auto type games. Yeah, yeah. Which is you know. Which is fine, and I was fine with that. They tried to go very Grand Theft Auto in the beginning. When they got to the third one, that's when it started getting ridiculous. When yeah. you got to the f- by the fourth one, you were the president of America being abducted by aliens and getting superpowers <laughs> to jump around the city. Yeah, you know they started um, they started off just trying to copy them. Then they said, "Oh, you know what? This isn't going to work for us. People want something different." And mm-hmm. then they went just wacky and yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm actually I'm actually curious why. Um, why they've decided to put the effort into maybe putting this in instead of I'm not sure maybe they've co- maybe they've crunched the numbers or something on how Heroes of Mayhem would have gone on the Switch. Oh God, they wouldn't have done anything. <laughs> mm. But I, I guess you're putting Saints Row Third out. 
because it, you know it's it's a port of a PS3 Xbox 360 game. It's it's going to be able to run. Well, yeah. And also, you don't have Grand Theft Auto or any open world car games apart from uh, um, was it LA, LA Noir? Like LA Noir. LA, yeah. yeah, that's that's all you've got to compete with. So you know, putting it out on Switch is, you know, you're not really competing with a lot. No, you're just competing with people saying. Do I want a game from 2011 on my Switch right now? Depends what you feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends how they price it too. Like if if they come out if they come out with this and say thirty dollars Australian, um, you know that that'd be great. I think that'd be a real smart move on their behalf because you know sell, sell, they're not selling anything this game at all on Xbox 360, and they're selling very little on PS4 and Xbox One, and people aren't going to people aren't going to be interested in this at $60 and they certainly aren't going to be interested in this at $100. Mm-hmm. So, hopefully they come out and do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, so I think that wraps up the show. A bit of a shorter show this week, bros. Yeah. I mean, considering considering our last show was what a nearly 2 hours. It's a bit hour and 40 something minutes, yeah. Yeah. It is it is it is a um, it is a little bit slow at the moment. Honestly, we got we obviously got the indies news, but it's hard to talk. It's hard to talk about a bunch of indies where they show fifteen seconds worth per per game, and yeah, you know, sort of thing. Um, I'm I'm glad to see that Nintendo are putting a lot of focus into the indies. Um, actually, I'll just, I'll just TLDR one by one. I'm I'm glad to see I'm glad to see they're putting a lot of focus on the indies. They're giving them more of an attention span type of thing, and um. I hope that like that that library continues to grow because a lot did, a lot that they did show was brilliant. Yeah, like it, it, the Switch is the platform you want to play your indies on, in my opinion. Like just being able to put it in your pocket, take it with you. Like I, I was the same with the Vita and the 3DS as well. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, like even old retro games, like you know, Link to the Past. Like you want it on your TV, but you know, putting. It, Putting it on 3DS is a lot easier to sort of digest and get through it. Yeah. So it's the same with indie games for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as for as for Phil, uh, <laughs> I, I think I think it's pretty safe to say. As for Phil, I think I think I think it's pretty safe to say where he belongs right now, and that's far away from the internet. <laughs> yeah, and that's what he's doing. So. Yep. So Good hopefully, boy. hopefully he can let go of that and. I think his I think his career's quite gone down the drain, and even his YouTube career, I'm not sure that's going to survive anymore. <laughs> Actually, the, the got um Salim from the Hungry Game is this is what he suggested. He said he should start up his YouTube channel again, start doing reviews again, then like you know go through his reviews, say his review, then at the end he goes, okay guys, uh, put in the comments where you think I plagiarized this review from. <laughs> if you get it right, uh, I'll give you a shout out in the next video. Peace. Like do this. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny, I think. Oh dear lord! Uh, so, Bryce, so uh, where can they find you on Twitch and Twitter? Uh, Ivy Revan, Ivy Revan, and you can find me at Idruby on both those platforms, and you can find the House of Mario on Twitter at the House of Mario. Uh, Join in our Discord; we've got links in the show notes of where you can find that. Lots of cool people in there to talk to. Yes, there are. And uh, if you feel so inclined to, if you want to help out the show at all, leave us a five star review on iTunes. It helps out. Hope <laughs> helps us out a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, apparently, um, apparently, to uh, according to iTunes, they say uh, the better the reviews are. If so, they they, they actually, miss that, o- that's literally all it says. It just says the better the reviews are. Dot dot dot. Yeah. Well, um, as far Mister iTunes come to me himself and he said the better the reviews are. Yeah, no, that's what he said. And then he just sat there nodding his head, and you're like, "Thanks, mate." And I just took it on the chin and said, "He must mean the better reviews are the better." Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> and if you don't use Apple products or you don't use iTunes, Son Claude. Yeah, tap your friend on the shoulder, say, "Hey, um, this is a Nintendo podcast. Would you be interested?" Uh, like maybe give him a cookie at the same time. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this week's Nintendo jukebox is Sienna Build by Cubby on SoundCloud. And uh, when I reached out to Cubby uh, through SoundCloud messaging, he actually sent me his uh, media kit as well, just explaining a bit a bit about what he does. So I'll I'll just read that out to give you some context about that. So he says uh, he's based in Norway in a small city called Karazikstan uh, in sa- in the south of the country. Uh, consists of a long time uh, producer, 
uh, whom has written for music for bands, artists, as well as YouTube channels like Trainer Tips, uh, Mr. Suicide Sheep, and multiple a multitude of the video game titles like Slime Sand and Just Shapes and Beats since 2009. So that's awesome. That's pretty impressive. I, I absolutely love Slime Sand too. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it all works out well for you. And I've been wanting to play Just Shapes and Beats because that was another game in another Indies Direct I really wanted to play. So yeah, yep. Which I haven't got around to. There's too many goddamn games on Switch. There is. There I really want to try and concentrate on getting, like, playing more of these games. But there's just so many and there's only so much cash you can chuck towards them. But we'll try our best. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for listening to this week's episode and we'll catch you later. Bye. Deep pool.